So it's basically the next day and uh, here we are. This is the solid state drive that I was uh, intending on installing here. Uh, don't know if this is the best one, probably not, but uh, it'll serve the purposes for what I need it for. Um, and you know, the great thing about PCs is that you can always decide to upgrade what you have. Um, so, I mean, this is not like the definitive drive that I'll have to use, uh, but it'll serve uh, me right now. So let's go ahead and get it installed. The SSD is mounted. You know, if I learned anything from this build is the fact that I need to have both panels off at all times during the build because I keep on having to unscrew these uh, the screws that go into the back panel just so I can do some cable management in the back. Um, so that's probably a lesson learned. Uh, I should probably wait to the very end of the build to uh, put the covers on. But uh, nonetheless, this is installed already, so now we're going to be ready to turn it on. So hopefully everything turns out well. So this is one final look before I put the other panel in. Looks like everything's in order. And this will go to the fan on the side panel. So let's go ahead and turn her on. Where we're at, uh, I try turning it on. I think everything powers up. That's the good news. The bad news is that the RAM that I bought uh, is not working with this motherboard. At least that's what I suspect. Um, I went ahead and removed it, so it's gone from there. And I had to go purchase uh, some new RAM. Here it is. So I was able to get this uh, Corsair uh, two sticks of eight gigabyte RAM. So I got sixteen gigabytes. And these are 32 megahertz, so a uh, little slower than the other ones that I had. Um, so I emailed the uh, the seller from the previous uh, memory sticks that I got and he gave me a full refund. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use these. Um, I ended up buying off another seller that is in my local area. So I'm hoping that these uh, will be the ones to make this whole project come to an end. Uh, because it's been a lot more... <laughs> Of a struggle that I ever thought building uh, this PC, um, but um, hopefully this will solve the problems and we'll get the BIOS on the screen uh, because the other ones when I had them in there was giving me no picture at all. So uh, I tried troubleshooting it a little bit. I pulled the the RAM out, and when I tried turning it on without the RAM, it gave me the same picture. So I'm thinking that it's probably the RAM that's bad. So we're gonna put these into the computer and see if we can get a picture. For inserting those new RAM, let's go ahead and test it out, see if it works. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. So everything looks like it's turning on. Okay. And st still no picture. All right, so I went online and I did a little bit of research as, as, as it turns out, I might have installed a CPU that uh, on paper it's compatible, but uh, with an upgrade to the BIOS on the motherboard. And in order for me to do that, I would have to get a sixth generation Intel processor into the socket and install everything and then go ahead and uh, get a uh, the BIOS update and update the motherboard and then I would be able to install a seventh generation uh, Intel processor so that's going to be kind of a hiccup on this project and I will have to find a sixth generation Intel processor and in order for me to get this working uh, so the build is pretty much done uh, but now we're going to have to have to troubleshoot this motherboard and see if by installing an Intel processor uh, from the sixth generation in there, we'll get it working. Uh, I'm hoping that I can uh, do that and then everything will work um, because I really like this motherboard uh, and, you know, I like the lights in the back and it makes very easy uh, accessibility for uh, adding cables or removing cables. Um, I feel like everything else is coming along great. I mean, this setup looks really great. Um, I can't wait to get the other interface that I want to add here so for my card readers and stuff like that. But aesthetically, I'm very satisfied uh, with the setup. Uh, I just got the new fans in today. So I got my dual fan here, my dual fans here, 
Uh, just kind of give you a view of the inside. So we're getting excellent ventilation here. And my CPU fan is spinning. So everything is functioning as it should be functioning, uh, but I will have to do something about that CPU. So I'm looking online to see if I can get like a cheap sixth generation Intel processor and install it on this computer. And then we will be able to install a program. We'll be able to uh, update the BIOS. So uh, till then, I guess this project is going to be on hold and it'll be a part two. Uh, but uh, worst case scenario is that, that this board doesn't work at all, which I don't think that would be the case because if it didn't work at all, it probably wouldn't even power up. You know, you see, for example, you got that LED light and it's saying that uh, it's the CPU is at 62 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So, I mean, I think this thing is working fine. I think if there was a problem, we probably would have seen an error message right there, but I don't see one. So uh, I think it's just having to update this board so that it'll take the the newer processor. So the uh, that uh, interface uh, dashboard for the uh, SD cards uh, in the mail. And I'm just gonna. So uh, pretty basic. I mean, it's uh, not a super heavyweight, so I don't think it's the best quality. But I mean, it's pretty solid. It comes with uh, these screws, and I don't know exactly what these stickers are for. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and just open it, take it out of the bag. This is a bag that protects against static electricity. So I got all these cables to connect. So presumably these are for the fans and these are, uh, I guess, sensors for uh, the case. So I guess, I don't know, maybe you have to stick the stickers onto the sensor so that you can get the temperature inside the case. Um, here's the face plate. Um, you can see that there's a, like a little LED display and it comes with your SD card and you get your two uh, USB 3.0s, uh, your SATA, um, TF, I'm not sure what that's for. I know that uh, this is for uh, compact flash SD cards. And this is, I think it's for the uh, the Sony, those Sony cards. Uh, I forgot what they're called, um, but uh, they're proprietary. I, did, I think these are for uh, the small um, SD cards. And uh, I don't know what this one might be for, but... Uh, and then there's a nice little LED there that shows you that uh, it's reading the cards. You got an, also an, an additional interface for the uh, headphone and the microphone, which I probably won't need. Uh, never... No, never understood why this would be put on the interface of the uh, complex um, of the SD card reader, but it's there. I'm sure there's some use for it. And then you got your uh, fan controls here for uh, fan number one and fan number two. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and install this, uh, turn it on just to see the front of it. And then afterwards, we'll get moving with the CPU to help us uh, finally update uh, this computer so we can actually use that seventh generation uh, CPU. So uh, we got the uh, little dashboard here installed. That looks pretty good. So uh, I had to remove this little latch here. Uh, kind of just needed to get a screwdriver and pop it out. And I, it, I needed it so that I could access these uh, these screw holes uh, for the component. Uh, you don't definitely don't want this thing sliding back and forth, so it's nice to be able to just screw that on there. And that's also done on the other side. It's right there, so that's on the other side. So uh, this one is actually looking nice so far. Uh, I did have to remove the DVD uh, writer, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right back on and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get a good look at the front. So here is the final assembly. I got everything uh, plugged in pretty much. Uh, the only 
bad news about this is that uh, I was not able to plug in the extra headphone and microphone jack, which is really okay. I mean, I think it's kind of redundant being that the case already has a uh, microphone and a uh, headphone jack, um, a microphone and a headphone jack. Um, so I think it's kind of redundant to have to have this one as well. I mean, although it would have been nice, but I think these right here are uh, easier to reach. Uh, this USB uh, 3.0 uh, USB drive has been has been decommissioned because uh, this one has two, so I had to unplug this one in order to get these two to work. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an adapter where you can put two to one, and maybe if I if there is, maybe I'll get get one later and maybe attach this one and this one. Uh, but I do need one that has the two uh, versus the one that just has the one. So I'm gonna. Uh, for the time being, these are de decommissioned, uh, but I got the uh, USB working for the card reader, and I have this uh, installed with my top fans over here and my front fans over here. Um, and then I left uh, only two fans connected to this one, uh, but these are already at full blast, so there's no real need for me to adjust these unless I want to take the top off and adjust them. But uh, primarily, I want control of these fans and the fans in the front, uh, as those are going to be taking the bulk of the uh, heating over here. Uh, and then the side fans will continue to be controlled by this guy right here as well. All right, let's go ahead and uh, assemble it and turn it on, uh, see how, how well it works. All the thermometer uh, sensors here, uh, I don't know how well that's going to work. Uh, I figured that this will probably be the hottest part in the computer, being that this is the only place that, that you're not getting any cooling. So uh, I think this will probably be the most accurate way of figuring out uh, how well it's cooling. Uh, so I'm going to I put some uh, painter's tape on there, which should do the trick. Uh, and then the, you won't be able to see them because they'll be underneath this uh, part right here. So uh, and these are shielded off with Capcom tape, so I don't, I'm not worried about it causing any shorts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put the back panel on. There's plenty of space uh, for those sensors to go on. There's no interference. It's very easy to put this back panel back on. So uh, I think we're ready to turn it on. It's back assembled. Let's go ahead and turn it on see what it looks like. Wow, look at that. That looks amazing love that display look at that you definitely can adjust make it run a little slower but of course the heat will probably increase a hair yep So that brought it down all the way to 500 RPMs. Let's go ahead and boost that right back up. So if I count it, I probably have about uh, eight fans in going inside of this thing already so that is definitely going to keep the case very cool and uh hopefully once i get this cpu installed we'll be actually able to see this thing in action which i look forward to until i can resolve that problem i will have to make this a part two all right thank you very much for joining me have a wonderful weekend take care